Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's Product School webinar. Thanks for joining us today. Just in case you didn't know, Product School teaches product management, coding, data analytics, digital marketing, and blockchain courses online and at our 15 campuses worldwide. On top of that, every week we offer some amazing local product management events and host online webinars, live streams, and Ask Me Anything sessions. Head over to productschool.com after this webinar today. Today, we have an awesome guest presenting. I'd like to introduce you to Sneha Thakur. Sneha is a product manager at Salesforce in Indiana, and she has previously worked as a lead engineer at Gainsight. Sneha is interested in building products and features that solve market problems and increase value to customers. She likes to manage people and strategies and is also well-versed in JavaScript, database management, and agile and scrum methodologies, just to name a few. Feel free to leave any questions for Sneha in the comments, and I'll be sure to ask her at the end. Without further ado, let's welcome Sneha. Thanks for joining us today. Hi guys, uh, uh, and thank you very much, Dan, for having me here. And thanks everyone for joining. Uh, today we'll be talking about uh, how to transition into product management. Uh, if you have been, if, if you have not been in product management before, or if you have been an engineer and you are interested in product management. So uh, before I get into details, uh, Dan has already given you uh, enough information about me that what from what what I have done before and what I intend to do uh, in future and what I'm doing currently. So uh, let's let's uh, get into the presentation uh, and let's move ahead from there and please uh, feel free to drop any questions you might have so that we can you know we can have the an interactive session here and I'm able to help all of you uh, on uh, you know on all kind of questions you might have and who have uh, people who have been actually an engineer and who are interested in product management uh, I can answer your questions uh, related to that so uh, before I begin, this is basically some information about myself. So I started uh, uh, into software industry around eight years ago uh, after doing my BTEC in electronics engineering as a QA engineer. And then um, uh, I just had an interest in creating things and solving problems, but not about uh, solving problems in, how, uh, in, the, in the how way, but as in uh, the what and why way. So doing that, uh, I realized uh, that, okay, what, what would be the right way to go ahead and do it? So I started working uh, closely with my product managers and I learned uh, the you know, uh, nitty gritty details about how a product manager works. And that's how I landed into uh, this uh, uh, technical product management uh, role at uh, Salesforce. But I have done a lot of uh, different uh, you know, uh, shadowing kind of work and associate product management roles before coming to Salesforce. So the agenda of today's uh, uh, presentation and call would be to, uh, you know, I, I really am intrigued by uh, rockets and rocket science. So I have uh, divided the complete agenda into three different parts. One would be knowing the planet. The second would be what to do uh, before you launch. And then the third would be the tea time. So uh, let's, let's, let's know the planet a bit. What is product management? I think most of you who have joined us today would have seen this diagram a lot of time. Like you, you see this, uh, if you go out and Google it, you'll see the same Venn diagram. Uh, if, you, if you would have attended any other product management uh, webinars or workshops, you would have always seen this Venn diagram across. What is it actually about? Is it, is it really what a product management manager does? Or is it just that he has to collaborate with these different people or these different sections in the organization when he he or she is you know working as a product manager so uh, it completely depends on what kind of organization you're working with and what kind of uh, you know role you are in and depending on that you are basically you know uh, working in this domain uh, with ux engineers uh, tech people and business with what it all uh, the who part also comes in picture who is a product manager? Product manager is basically the intersection of building the product right and building the right product. So he or she is the one that, that it is that one person who takes the accountability of you know, making sure that the product is built right, but at the same time, the process, the design, the architecture, the user, the product ownership, the, uh, you know, the research part, everything is in harmony. 
if anything anywhere goes out of balance you know your product will not succeed so it is very important to know that when you are transitioning into a product management role you know that you know who all will be you who all will you be working with and what all you need to have a basic of and then you know how would you be bringing the balance between uh, you know building the right product and building the product right and there are certain processes which you should follow to make sure that you are making you are bringing that balance second uh, thing is that where you belong when when we talk about engineers we talk about uh, somebody who has aptitude for maths who who can think logically who is able to think creatively and who has the drive and determination to do it because what what as an engineer we do is we have some task and we make sure that we reach to the end of the task by uh, you know giving uh, it our best with our aptitude and uh, logical thinking now where does this engineering skill actually fall into product management because the product management quadrant looks more very much like you know communication being 40% of the job of a product manager business acumen being 20% of the job of a product manager design being 20% of the job of the product manager and engineering also being 20% of the job of the product manager what i mean by that is as a product manager you will spend this much this much percentage of your time doing these things and in order to be successful you should have a balance between all these four quadrants as an engineer you basically have these two skills where where you know where you you know how to design things and you know the engineering part of it what you need to develop or what you need to work on is the communication and business acumen part of it so it is important that when you are making that transition you are well aware of this fact so that you know building this 20% of design part and building this 20% of the engineering quadrant would not be something which you would be bothered about what you would be bothered about is making sure you are communicating uh, you know fluently and efficiently making sure that you are understanding where the business is going what your organization wants what your organization strategies are and how your product you know uh, aligns with that strategy or that that part of business there is a there, this is this is the major you know uh, difference between how you know you are going ahead with uh, of my product management because it's it's more like transitioning from how to what and you know it it looks like a a very simple paradigm paradigm shift but it's not that easy because transitioning from earlier you were thinking about how am i going to build this what am i uh, uh, you know uh, what am i going to add to this feature to make it more lucrative as my product manager has said but now you would be deciding what would be those features which i should be giving to my engineers to work on you know what uh, what would be the product or what would be the feature would would make which would make my organization grow and which would make my business flourish so this shift is really really important and trust me most of the engineers i have been an engineer most of us uh, you know struggle at this part because we have been in the habit of thinking in how this can be done and shifting from there to what and why am i doing this is really really tricky so now that we know that what product management is all about and what uh, you know where we belong it's time to see that what things we need to add to our, our daily routine or what uh, uh, what skills do we need to build up so that you know we reach the planet uh, and we are on our, our trajectory and uh, we have a successful landing so before you know before launching our ourselves into this role let's see like what are the checkpoints we should you know we should go let ourselves go through so a uh, checklist uh, before transitioning is uh, if you can answer these questions with a uh, positive affirmation this means that you are uh, you know you deserve it and you are ready to be there and you are ready for uh, you know take making that shift because or making that transition because it is really important to see problems around you do you have you uh, you know read manuals before you buy a product because product specification documents or product requirement documents is all about those manuals you are creating those manuals for your product and you want people to read them so uh, it is it is very important then that you yourself like reading them and you yourself find creative ways of creating those manuals have you created anything in past that you are proud of like 
did you, was it just one fine day that you got up and you wanted to be in product management or has it been a consistent continuous effort and you have seen that you know you can create things you can see problems around you you like discussing about those problems and solving those problems and you have done that in past so if you have done that you know you you definitely uh, are eligible to be there do you enjoy follow ups and updates regu regularly as as i said before 40% of product management job is communication if you can communicate well this means you know half of your work is done because uh, and communication does not mean just going and telling people like this is what we have to do it, it is more about follow ups because you are talking you are not you are not talking with machines here you are talking with humans and uh, you know you have to ha build that you know relationship there and you have to make sure that you are not um, uh, pissed off when you are when you are actually going and uh, you know taking updates or or when you are actually going and taking meeting notes so that that is really really important then you know do you like discussions over good versus perfect product this is one of the you know uh, one of the part which i like very uh, which i like a lot and which i like which i would want every person aspiring to become a product manager to think about it is it is very important to understand that there is there is a very thin line of difference between good versus perfect product it would it would be good to know like where you stand do you stand at the good product management side or do you want to be a perfect product management side because uh, if you tend to you know move on the perfect product management side a lot there is a tendency that you know you you'll get frustrated a lot so you know start thinking about it right now start thinking about it when you are trying to make this transition so uh where do you want to go is again is the second checklist where where you would like to you know uh, weigh yourself you have already seen that what you what uh, you know what things you should be asking yourself now uh, product management is different in different organization and it is different in different uh, you know marketplace like <clears throat> a b2c product manager would work very differently from a b2b product manager so defining that area is important but a very basic uh, you know uh, product management categorization is that whether you want to be in a business uh, uh, oriented product management or whether you want to be in a technology oriented product management now my uh, recommendation to uh, you know a lot of engineering people uh, would be uh, to you know to move on the technology pn side and uh, as you can see like if you if you have uh, a balance of both marketing and, and you know engineering skills like if you can be the voice of customer if you can do a good competitive analysis but at the same time if you are good in uh, you know archi architectural vision if you can um, uh, understand the importance of design and scoping then you become a perfect pm or i would say a good pm uh, so uh, for for people who are who are engineers here or, and who have joined uh, this call uh, i would really recommend going to the uh, you know uh, engineering side of it which is a technology pm because it is very very close to what you have done in engineering uh, since you don't have a lot of uh, you know customer interactions you can build that up when you are working as a technology pm what you need to develop uh, on or what skill set you need to work as a technology pm is product technology expert which you already are since you have you know you have been in the engineering domain design and scoping design is your forte scoping uh, can be added because you have worked on a lot of stories if you have followed a jive you have worked on a lot of stories and you know how you you have worked on those stories and how you have scoped and descoped them from your sprint architectural vision you have been in all the technical discussions about the product which you were working on so this uh, this would be very familiar domain for you defect management it is uh, and uh, every engineer which works knows uh, you, knows about bugs and issues and everything so defect management would be would be an easier task for you because you know that which bug is important and which investigation is important and which one i would want to solve first feature definition you would be able to you know define features uh, technical features easily much easily than uh, a business product manager because you know the you know uh, core of the product you know like 
what are servers, what are services, what are APIs, and you can define the features accordingly for those, uh, you know, for those services. Usability of, of the product. Since you'll be a technology PM, most likely you'll be working on the, you know, on the backend side of the product where your users are not uh, your, the end users, but uh, it's ma majorly your um, other users within the organization or very technical users like you know, app users, which are majorly developers. So you know the mindset of those developers, you know how the developers would be actually uh, using these products and you'll be easily able, you'll be easily able to, you know, define the usability of product thinking as a developer or thinking as a, a quality engineer. So people who are here from engineering, I would uh, really recommend that try finding, you know, uh, try seeing yourself as a technology PM and technical product management is much in demand these days. So you would definitely want to search those options. People who are here, uh, who are not into, uh, who are not an engineering student uh, and who are doing their maybe MBA and who, who want to pursue product management as their uh, career and uh, have a good business acumen, I think, for you, business product managers would be a good uh, start because you know you know you have learned about the market. You know how to build this uh, strategy. You know uh, market research part. You know product positioning part. So for all uh, for if for all those skills, I think for you the business product management would be uh, really helpful. Tips while transitioning. When you're transitioning, what you should do and what you should not do. So those are read 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 please read as many articles as many blogs as many books you can because those are really really going to help you the more you read the more uh, information you can get the more uh, aware uh, you would be you would be so please read as much as you can about product management products what what is going on in this industry everything then write what you read Writing is important because what you have read is uh, is has given you some idea about some product or some something which is happening in this world. Now, when you're writing it, you're actually writing a synopsis of it. You're not writing the exactly the same story what somebody else has written. So while writing the synopsis, it's majorly like defining the uh, as you would define a product requirement. So. Uh, because the product requirement doc would not just be something which you have come up with, but it would be something which you heard from your customers as a requirement and we, which you heard from your engineers, what could be done. So uh, please write what you read, know what you wrote. Uh, you have written something uh, and, or say you have written a product specification and you have, uh, you will have, uh, you know, scenarios or situations where you'll have to, uh, you know, uh, read it through across your executive board. And if you don't know what you have written, and if you don't know like what you are actually intending to do, that could be a really tricky situation for you. So please understand that what you are writing. Side projects are gold mines. I, as I said before, I started uh, getting into product management way before I jumped into this role in Salesforce. It was uh, it was back I think in 2012 when I did my first project uh, product man uh, management uh, work. I worked as an associate product man manager for a mobile app, and that really helped me develop those you know skills which I was honing to uh, you know uh, um, uh, uh, honing to uh, go ahead and uh, make 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 it more mature. So. Uh, doing side projects would actually help you in many various ways. You will understand the perspective of person whom you are working with. You'll understand the domains where, you know, uh, where you have, uh, where, where you have never been and which you have never touched. You would, uh, you would understand that, you know, how things work in, uh, when you are actually working on a product, how, how the communication happens, how the, you know, design happens, how the sp uh, specific docs are written, how the customer, are, uh, customers are convinced, how the negotiation happens, all of that. Network. Networking is really important, especially if you're trying to switch roles within your organization uh, and, and also with, uh, outside of your organization, because, you know, uh, today in today's world, one person knows the other with the reference of other person. So if you if A knows you and A knows B, then A would be the person who can refer you to B. So it's really important that you start networking, let people know that you are interested in this profile, you want to do this and show, showcase them that what you have done, if you have done some market research, if you have done some, you know, if you have gone through Gartner's quadrant uh, and you have, you know, figured out something and you have, uh, you have a synopsis written for that. So do go ahead and share with them. 
uh, because people who are there in this role, they'll recognize your skills and they'll give you opportunities. Beggars are not choosers. This is, uh, this is a very common line we all have heard. I would say that if you are really interested in this, don't say that I want to you know, get into this company and into this role. No, you have to start. You, foot in the door is really, really important. It's very important that you get in there. It's, it's, it should be like your first deal which you are trying to crack. Don't think that which company it is, what role, uh, you know, uh, what kind of, uh, what size it is, what pay scale they are giving you. If you are really passionate about it, just go for it. Because once you develop it, once you be there, once you have uh, experienced it, you'll, you'll have uh, more choices uh, in your future. Bring the bread to the table. It is, it, once, you, once, you are go, once you are, you know, once you are going there, so everybody whom you are talking to, should be able to understand that what are you going to bring to the organization when you are going to join, you know, join the organization or when you're going to join this role within the organization. I mean, this is, this is a very common thing. Um, and we all have gone through this in, in the interview where, you know, where the interviewer asked us that what would you uh, bring to this organization? So it is really important to think it from the product management perspective. What are you going to bring, uh, bring for the organization? And the answer should not be that I'll develop new features because there are already product managers who can develop new features. The answer uh, should be more on, you know, what strategies do you have? How do you see the product currently? What are the, you know, uh, merits and demerits of the product? How do you think of, uh, you know, um, uh, correcting those demerits? Or how do you think of uh, making those demerits into uh, merits? So uh, catching those loopholes. When you are talking to the people, the person should understand that, okay, this guy has actually, you know, gone through uh, all of the details and he or she knows about the details more than, you know, anybody else whom, whom, whom I have interviewed till now. So it's, it's really important uh, there. Don't, what, what you should not. Don't sound desperate. If you sound desperate, uh, you know, you, the intention of, you know, uh, showcasing like what you are capable of doing would, uh, would be completely faded away. And if, even if you would want to show, show that, it would not come up that greatly. So it is really important that you don't sound that you, you are very much desperate about this product. You, you should sound that you are interested in this, you are capable of this, and you can do this, but not desperate. Don't miss the opportunities. Whatever comes in your way, please uh, go through it. Don't don't see uh, think that you know. Uh, okay, maybe maybe not now. I have a I have a vacation coming up, so I should probably you know I can look at it later. I or I can try it next year. No, if you if something is coming up and if that is really your passion, I think you should you should be able to work on that opportunity right away. Don't screw relationships. I have learned this uh, very late in my life that you know relationships are really, really important when you are trying to move or when you are trying to make a career progress. Because those relations, if you if you are if you have good bond with people, that's how you can you know you'll be able to manage people. If you're not able to uh, you know uh, have good bonds with bond with people, you'll not be able to manage people. So don't screw the relationship. Don't miss the details. Lo don't lose your focus and. And of course, I would say don't get an MBA done just for product management because product management is not about getting an MBA done. Paths to success uh, for working professionals, uh, I would say in your, if you are in current company, do uh, uh, three of these, like start the conversation, work with an existing PM and show leadership and design. If you are trying outside of your company, you know, you should probably build a product of your choice and take feedback from people, go to regular meetings, join some, uh, you know, uh, training programs, see what other people uh, do in their domains to learn about product management or, or to get into product management, join meetups, webinars, workshops, because these will give you experiences from different people and uh, you will learn from them. Like there would be some mistakes which would be very common. So you'd learn from those mistakes. For non-working professionals, students, I would say uh, take a formal education if you can, but it is not mandatory. If, if, if it is possible, if you are interested, you can go ahead and take a formal education, build a product of your choice, uh, read books and explore, enroll into any of these uh, training programs. Uh, again, join meetups, webinars, and workshops because that would give you a lot of insight. Uh, connect with PMs on social network and ask for mentorship. This I have done a lot on, on LinkedIn and uh, I have done a lot through product school 
where I have, uh, you know, gone through web gone to webinars and done workshops, and uh, I have met, I have connected with PMs on LinkedIn, and and I have un uh, understood like what they have been doing, and I've asked for their feedback, and I've asked for their suggestion, what I should be doing if I'm in such and such situation. So please do that. Now it's time that you you move into this role. So there are strengths which you can play on. Specifically, if you're an engineer, you can play on the technology and UX skills and the domain knowledge. And you have to sharpen your soft skills and business acumen because as an engineer, it is really important that you develop these skill, skills to become a good product manager. And please go through this product manager survival guide. This really helps a lot. This really has helped a lot of product manager, including me in knowing like what you know, how you can survive being a product manager, because this is not an easy role. You, uh, and this is not a nine to five job. So you'll have a lot of things which you'll be doing uh, parallelly. So multitasking would be one of the key features which you should be playing on. Traits uh, of a good product manager is uh, stay curious, be passionate and raise the team and people. It is really important that you are uh, you don't get in entropy. You don't throw yourself in a stage where you are not interested in knowing what's happening and what I should be doing next. So please stay curious. Passionate, passion is important when you are when you are into any role, and it is the same for prop, for product management. It, you have to throw your head, heart, and soul when you are working into this role. You can you can't just get into an ephemeral phase where you know you you are not thinking about doing anything. So be passionate about what you are doing. Don't think about work hours. Don't think about the job pressure. Uh, enjoy your work. That that's very important. Uh, and raise the team and people because you'll be a product manager for a particular team or or multiple teams. It is really important that you uh, you know uh, provide recognition to them or to the senior leadership because uh, especially in the product domain because it is very important for those people to get recognition if you want to get recognized. So clap for them, be the man uh, or woman behind the curtain and uh, you know, help them grow, help them uh, respect them and acknowledge what they're doing for you. So it is really important for you as a product manager uh, to, you know, to, to, be, uh, to be acknowledgeable for what, what people or what engineers or what UX or what uh, marketing or sales is doing, doing for your product. Uh, these are the books and channels I would recommend uh, if you are interested in this role because uh, I have I, and I have gone through most of uh, most of these and I have uh, uh, when when I was doing my mentorship with somebody on LinkedIn, uh, you know uh, that person gave me the same feedback about these books and uh, even in my organization when I was making this move, a lot of people recommended uh, these channels and books to me. So I would like to share the same with all of you. Uh, please do uh, do read these books and do follow these. Channels channels because it will be helpful you, you'll eventually realize that how it has helped you grow in this in this domain so uh that's all from my end guys uh and i think we should be good with uh q a awesome thank you so much for that presentation that was great so we do have a couple questions here from our community let me pull them up And okay, so Tina said, how can I gain skills in the bottom quadrants? This was near the beginning of your presentation when you had the different quadrants. Uh -huh. She said, um, how can I gain skills in the bottom quadrants, design and engineering, given one doesn't have the technical background, but is still passionate in solving customer problems? I think uh, that that's a really great question, Tina. And uh, thanks for asking that. Uh, so I would I would tell you that uh, if you don't have an expertise in, um, in you know, in engineering or in design, uh, you don't have to be very much into the into design or engineering. Because as if you would have seen in my presentation, there are two sites where you can move. One is the technology PM and one is the business PM. So for being a business PM, all you need to understand is how the design is being made. And there are a lot of tutorials, a lot of videos which you can go through. But for you, if if you are if you are talking specifically about a product which you are working on. I think uh, the subject matter experts for those products, which would be the lead engineer or principal engineer, 
should be your best friends because they can help you understand the design they can help you understand the engineering part of it and there would be some keywords which you would not understand and i think you should not uh, uh, be ashamed of asking those questions like what does this mean if if somebody's talking about api what does this api mean or what does this server mean or what does a slot worker mean so please go ahead and ask those questions and you would you would have a you know better understanding of those things awesome thank you for answering that question uh let's move on to i think we have time for just one more question um, since you have a QA slash technical background, how often do you look back and say, yeah, a technical background is helping me in my role today? Oh, uh, a lot of time because I am working as a technical product manager. So for me, that's a really a plus point because I'm able to understand like what my engineers are speaking and I'm able to translate that into uh, a customer, uh, you know, or a business language, so which my customers can understand. So it is, it is really, really uh, important and it has really helped me a lot. Cool. Well, we've just hit um, our end of the webinar. So before we run, I just wanted to give you guys some more information on our upcoming courses and events at Product School. Um, our product management, coding, data analytics, digital marketing, and blockchain courses are taught by industry experts working at companies like Google and Facebook. And in addition to that, we offer weekly online and on-site events at our 15 campuses across the US, UK, and Canada. And uh, if you're located near a campus, make sure you stop by one of our weekly events every Wednesday and Thursday. And you can also find us on social media at Product School. And be sure to keep up with the latest product management content at the product blog at productschool.com. So thank you all for joining. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I hope to see you next week. Thank you, Sneha. Have a great day. Thank you, guys.